Hey everybody, it's Keith with the L1 Automotive Training Channel, and we got kind of an interesting one. I wanted to take you along with this. Uh, this is not a normal diagnosis. Things don't normally go like this. This vehicle is really rough. Uh, please don't be judgmental. There's a lot of things you're going to see on this car that are maybe questionable. And Real quick, 2003 Jeep Grand Cherokee. Um, it's in fairly rough state. The, the vehicles had the windows open for a while. We'll go around here and I'll show you the thing that was like, whoa, I should probably film this. So, um, primary thing is that's how the battery is. That is not an AGM. That is battery is leaking. We are getting it turned up, but this literally just showed up like this. And I figured <sighs> probably ought to figure out what's going on with this vehicle, get it outside. It's also pouring rain outside, so, eh. Anyways, it's a, two, not 2003, it is a 2000. The Autel's telling me to hook up the Chrysler Collision uh, Detection Connector, otherwise I might not be able to talk to ABS or ORC. That's fine. And then we're gonna go ahead and start our scan. I'll see you guys in just a second. Okay, sorry about that, uh, had to take a minute. <laughs> Long story short, I thought this was going to be a little different because I'll show you in a minute. Long story short, uh, the car was no comm to the PCM. I checked powers and grounds and communication. Uh, everything seemed to be where it was supposed to be to the PCM. So I called the individual and was like, hey, uh, I know there is something else wrong with this car, but it needs a PCM. Um, I asked him if he had one because he's got kind of like a slew of these vehicles laying around. He did not, but I had one, so I checked. I did have a PCM on the on the shelf over there. It was for a 2000 model Jeep Grand Cherokee with a 4 liter, which is what this has. So, uh, I went ahead and slammed it in there. Um, but there's another problem with this car. So, real quick, I get it. Not every shop will have this capability, okay? Having part laying around, but all I did was stick the donor PCM I had in, the original one's still in there, just unplugged. I plugged that one in, left it there. I know this car needs something else besides a PCM. I don't know how it got to this state, neither does, I keep wanting to say his name, but I want to give away who it is. Uh, we're going to call him G-Man. So G-Man, I told G-Man, hey, don't buy a PCM for this truck yet, even a used one, um, because it's going to have something else. So let's figure out if it's going to be worth fixing. So. I wanted to kind of show you what's going on. So I put this PCM in, this PCM is now communicating. Uh, let's see if it's done. Yeah, it's gonna have a lot of codes. We can just pause this scan. I don't really care. And realistically, I wanted you to get to the point where I can show you a diagnosis of this crank no start diagnosis that's not a PCM that doesn't communicate because we get a lot of those. So the first thing is you'll run into, hey, at a PCM doesn't communicate. Um, no crank reference signal at PCM is active. So we would think, okay, it may be a crankshaft position sensor problem, which would make sense why you had a crank angle sensor on the floor. Um, let's go to live data. Got a jump box on there. And this is a call that we get kind of often, but you'll see. Um, so let's go to engine speed, uh, show selected. We'll go ahead and graph engine speed. I don't need to see it to 7,000 RPM. We're going to set the min to zero, the max to, we're going to, this is a crank no start, so we'll go to 500. Full screen. I actually don't know what's going on with this, so we'll see. Okay, so. We have no engine RPM, so now we're in a condition where, okay, with no engine RPM, we probably have no crankshaft position sensor signal, which means we probably have no spark, right? But don't get too caught up on that, because I don't know if you heard what I heard, but yes, the battery voltage was kind of low, um, that's why I had the jump box on there, but that engine cranking cadence sounded even to a degree, but trained ear here. This is typically, I never show a case study where I'm like, woo, I win. It's always case studies for me are always the ones I learn on the ones that really kicked my butt. So on this one, 
I got it. I'm going to gloat on this one. I'm going to let my ego go on this one. I, I know what's wrong with this car, and I can hear it. There's multiple problems. Now we have a PCM doesn't communicate, and we don't have Spark. What I believe we're in a condition is... The original condition is neither of those. Those two were induced failures by replacement of bad or wrong parts or installed incorrectly or something like that. So um, what I believe is going on with this is that it has a lack of compression. I think it had a head gasket or an internal engine failure or maybe rockers are off or push rods. You know, it's a four liter, so it's probably a head gasket issue more than anything. Um, but I can tell that from hearing it. And I can, I don't, I'll see if I can get you guys to hear this cranking cadence with me here. Okay, so it's, it's kind of normal and kind of abnormal. So the cadence sounds pretty even, dun, 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 dun. But what I hear is the starter spinning at a faster speed than what the crankshaft is. What I was really hoping to see was that there was crankshaft speed. I haven't ever grabbed live data. You're actually seeing this with me live. I haven't found that. I cranked this car, knew what was wrong. I believe there was a lack of compression, right? But then the, the no count of the PCM was a surprise. And then just now was a surprise. I was hoping to see engine RPM. Because if we saw engine RPM, we would probably see it cranking at like 200 plus RPM. And you crank enough cars that are crank no start, and you can tell that sounds slow, but that's because we're only hearing some of the cylinders. So that dun, 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 it sounds like we're hearing top dead center of each of the six cylinders. I think we're only hearing three cylinders. So I'm going to show you the test that I would do normally, and I haven't done it yet, and I hope I'm right. We're actually, this would be kind of funny if I'm wrong. So far, from the start of this video, to now, because I scanned it a minute ago and was like, PCM no com. Well, that wouldn't cause compression. So anyways, we're gonna boot up Pico here. Yes, you can do, you can select a setup, but um, I've got a setup that I, that I typically use. So what I do is I go into my one channel. So I'm gonna use channel 1A. It's currently at 20 volts. So we're gonna go to AC couple. So we're not gonna couple our, we're not gonna reference our signal to ground. We're gonna do an AC coupling. So it's going to be referenced to zero volts. Uh, I'm going to do a two volt swing. Probably don't even need that, honestly. Um, we're going to go to our time base. We're going to crank her up to about 200 millise uh, 500 milliseconds. We're going to set a trigger. Uh, we're going to set a trigger for a single trigger, rising edge. And we're going to go ahead and drag that to over here. So what I've done is I turned a trigger on. And I've told it I want you to capture, but only when you meet certain criteria. I want when this waveform crosses, when the voltage measured crosses past 120 millivolts for it to draw a single picture that is 500 milliseconds per division. So half a second per division. I've got 10 divisions here. So I'm going to get, um, you know, a total of two seconds or something here, whatever, whatever the math is on that. 10, so five seconds. I'm going to get five seconds on the screen here. Um, so I've got it all set up to where I can just go. It's, it's currently running. We're actually, it's measuring, I don't know if you can see, but it looks like it's moving. And that's because it's currently recording. So what this is is a relative compression test. And oh, I guess it would help <laughs> if I set up the lead. There's uh, nothing hooked up here. So there's lots and lots of videos out. Voltage drop diagnostics to Brandon Steckler to even train by text, we have videos. So we're going to take a single lead. Um, there's a couple ways you can do this. You can do this either with what I'm going to do, which is battery voltage. Um, or you can do it with current. And current is typically a prettier picture and uh, the acquisition can be better. But a current acquisition can easily be skewed from problems within the starter motor because you're measuring current on the starter motor, the work being done. I'm gonna measure voltage drop. So the overall effect, which, you know, voltage drop, voltage drop can also be affected um, from a problem in the starter as well. But, sorry, I think the camera's all blurry because my, my phone's gross. So, I'll, I'll show you in a second. What I'm doing, put it on the battery leads. That's it, put it on the battery lead. So as a starter motor, motor works and turns over the engine, as each piston comes to top dead center, or technically as it comes to the point where it um, has the most pressure, then the starter is going to have to work harder and harder to get that piston to top dead center. So 
technically we would see current rise all the way to the point where the piston reaches top dead center, then current would decrease in the starter, which conversely, current and voltage work together. They're, 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 where current is being done, there's voltage being dropped. Uh, that's just how, that's physics. So now we're gonna look at voltage drop. So instead, wherever the piston comes to top dead center or to the point of the most compression, it may not be top dead center if it's a timing issue, we're gonna see voltage drop. So we're going to look at the valleys of voltage drop to make sure they are even. And my suspicion says that's not what's gonna happen. So, all right, I up the lead and I changed up to 280 millivolts because it's too close to that. So again, we're 500 milliseconds per division. Got my trigger set at 280 millivolts and the scope is run. So now we're gonna go hold the engine at wide open throttle, crank it, come back, look at our waveform, and hopefully looking at the waveform will help you identify what I'm talking about a little easier. So wide open throttle, we don't want any air restrictions. And hold up, is this getting kind of confusing? Well, if it is, you guys can head over to l1training.com and I have hundreds of hours of advanced level training. We cover diagnosis, module programming, EEPROM, immobilizer, keys, board repairs, all of the great stuff you guys have questions about at l1training.com. Most of these classes are done live, so we have these Q&As where we can ask, you guys can ask questions, and I answer them right there. Head on over to l1training.com and sign up, and we'll see you guys there. Okay, I saw that we had a full screen on the scope. So let's go take a look at this waveform. And I can tell you typically, if you do voltage, like I do instead of current, you will have to add a filter. So this looks super gross. We can, I can already see what the problem is. I, I'm vindicated, I'm right, I feel good now. But I'm gonna click on my channel A, I'm gonna go to my display properties, activate my low pass filter, and crank that down to where it's a little easier for you guys to see. I would typically would tell anyone new to using a scope, do not use a filter when acquiring. Acquire the filter as dirty as, or acquire the, the, the signal as dirty as it is, then add the filter on that, because you don't want to filter out the problem if that's the type of signal. This particular signal, probably not the case. So what we're looking at is the inrush current of the starter and trying to st start the engine turning, and once the crankshaft's turning, there's a lot less voltage drop because it takes a lot less current to keep the engine spinning. So we have that inrush current, which if this was an amp clamp, then we would see it flipped over. So each of the peaks would be the point of theoretical top dead center or the point of most pressure in the cylinder. So you notice we're seeing a big inrush and then a down, a small pull, a big pull, a small pull, a big pull, an almost non-existent pull, a big pull, a small pull, a big pull. What that means is we're hearing these cylinders. If we added a second channel that was on spark, which I'm not going to do on this thing because the video is already 12 minutes and I've probably lost most people's attention at this point, I would probably have every three of these big, I would have one second channel if I added spark in there. Um, if I you know, got a second channel to do that, you would see it here and then here, which means there should be six cylinders of compression between each uh, point of spark. But I bet we would see, we're only hearing three, right? So this is, we would just plug in the firing order. I don't know what the firing order of this is, but it, you know, one, two, three, four, five, six. One, two, three, four, five, six. One, two, three, four, five, six. But to our ear, we're probably only hearing three, five, one, three, five, one, three, five. We're not hearing the other cylinders. Getting at is that this Grand Cherokee has a crankshaft signal acquisition problem, which can be from probably the one of the parts installed is failed or bad. The pigtail was cut off. They may have wired it wrong. We don't know. Uh, the engine control module does not communicate that's in the vehicle. I don't know if that was induced from a testing method. Someone may have damaged the PCM. I, I just, we don't know the history of this vehicle, but also we have a low compression on every other cylinder. If this was a V-type engine, I would be concerned about engine timing. This is a, a single camshaft and crankshaft and a gear set. It's probably not timing. If it was dual overhead cam or bank to bank or what you know whatever we, we we could we could confirm that maybe the timing was on one so the other maybe we could do a timing job. At this point, I'm simply going to educate the customer and inform them of what I have found and let the ball be in their court. I don't believe that this vehicle would be worth putting an engine in and a computer and figuring out the crank sensor problem. But I don't know. That's not my decision to make, right? I'm I'm not the vehicle owner. That's for them. But I thought I'd display this uh, test for you real quick. It's kind of a fun one because it's a car that has multiple problems, and we find that all the time. 
Uh, and Zach too just came back today from a large automotive company where they threw the kitchen sink at a vehicle for a misfire and it was a mechanical concern. Uh, unfortunately for them, the customer was sitting in the waiting room and heard the entire explanation of what we found. They were pretty upset. So how upset would you be as a customer if you brought a vehicle to a shop and they put an engine control module and a crankshaft sensor and damage one of those two things or both of them in lieu of trying to find your engine. Wouldn't you have been much happier had you taken it to a shop, had it diagnosed and say, Mr. or Mrs. Cup? Just realized this turned into like a podcast rant. So if you want to hear more stuff like this, let me know. Like, subscribe, comment. Put down in the description below that you hated this big long rant. You just wanted to see what it took to fix the car because that's what half of the comments I get are is like, just tell me what's wrong with the car because they want to go put that part on their car thinking that their vehicle with the with a similar problem to this vehicle is exactly the same. Sorry, I don't do silver bullets. I'm an educator. That's what I do. You don't like how I do it? There's thousands of other channels out there. But for those of you that do like the content, I appreciate you. And for those of you who don't, hit the thumbs down, man. Because guess what? YouTube takes them as exactly the same thing. Either way, it's engagement for my channel, and it rocks. Just like you guys. So we'll see you next time. Thanks, guys.